We are talking about um, chapter six, variable costing um, for management analysis. So what we're gonna first do is dive into absorption costing. So what you guys may not have already known is we've already taken a look at absorption costing, except you didn't know it was called absorption costing. So let's take a, a quick look or jog your memory and then we'll go into variable costing and how that looks a little bit different. So absorption costing is required on the gap. So if you think back to accounting 1A, we talked about gap and gap is the generally accepted accounting principles. And that's just the, um, the, the principle is just an even playing field, right? So every company that is publicly sold, we all, they all are following the same rules and regulations. So anyways, under absorption costing, the cost of goods manufacturer are the cost of goods manufacturer consists of direct materials, direct labor, fixed and variable factory overhead, okay? So if you're looking at my slide, um, this income statement from a manufacturing business should look very familiar to you guys. Um, we covered this a lot in chapter one. Um, and then the only other thing I wanna mention in this slide is that it includes um, everything including the cost of goods sold on the income statement and on the inventory, on the balance sheet, which is inventory. So this last um, picture depicts what we've already seen from maybe accounting 1A and probably a little bit of the beginning of this chapter where we're doing sales, less your cost of goods sold equals gross profit. Then you subtract out any selling and administration expenses, and then you have your income from operations. What we're pointing out here on the absorption costing is there is no differentiating between fixed and variable cost, uh, variable factory overhead. So as a reminder, some examples of factory overhead includes um, like the salary of the plant supervisor, right? That would be considered um, factory overhead. Utilities, right? Um, or gas, things of that nature. Also, maybe indirect, stop on running that space, indirect materials, right, and indirect labor. All of that would be considered fixed and variable factory overhead, right? They're not directly traced back to depreciation, is another one. They're not directly traced back to the product, but what the absence of these things or the absence of these things. Um, would not allow us to produce or make a product, okay? So this is one, again, that we've seen before that we have all are aware of, okay? So this is no different from what we've seen in um, prior chapters, okay? Now, variable costing is where things get a little bit different, a little more challenging, things... Um, yeah, differentiating, I guess you would say. So when we're talking about variable costing, it is an internal decision-making um, process or how we decide to go about it, right? So remember in managerial accounting, tracking back to um, the chapter one, um, managerial accounting is all for the internal stakeholders. So your managers, your supervisors, all of those internal users, whereas financial accounting was all for external users, right? So on the absorption costing, which we just covered, the way we report all of that information is for the external users. However, when we're doing variable costing, we're doing this reporting to help um, internal decision makers, your managers, your supervisors, right? It is also called direct costing. So you have the cost of goods manufacturer consists of direct materials, direct labor. However, it only includes variable factory overhead, okay? So some examples of variable factory overhead would be maybe something like utilities, right? So um, it varies with the number of units that you produce or how much you use, right? So that would be considered a variable factory overhead. Um, and, and we will go over some other items that will be considered um, variable factory overhead as well. So your fixed factory overhead are not, repeat, are not a part of the cost of goods manufactured. They're considered period cost. 
So some examples of fixed factory overhead would be considered like depreciation and um, factory, um, the property taxes, right? Or property insurance, right? All of those would be considered fixed factory overhead that, you know what, no matter what, I have to pay these costs, right? Things of that nature. So, okay, um, again, going down memory lane, here's some examples. Um, so in the picture, you see factory overhead here. And so in our example of making guitars, the factory overhead was like our guitar strings, wages of the janitor, the power to run the machinery, depreciation expense, sandpaper and buffering materials, glue, so forth and so on. So we're saying that some of these items, if they're considered very, I mean, if they're considered fixed factory overhead, they're now gonna be considered period, period costs. And as a reminder, our period costs are those non-manufacturing costs. We're only gonna consider those variable items, okay? All right, so for my visual learners, I am very much a visual learner. Here is a good depiction of the difference between absorption costing versus variable costing. So again, everything pretty much looks the same until you get to your fixed factory overhead versus this part, right? So under absorption costing, remember this is gap approved, which we're sending this out to all of our um, external people, right? So the IRS, and then this one is for internal, okay? And so again, the fixed, the fixed um, factory overhead is considered a period cost, right? So we don't consider, we don't even look at that and we expense it out in the period that it incurs, okay? We're only looking at the variable portion, okay? All right, uh, so moving on here, um, on the variable costing, what we know about variable, sorry, what we know about variable costing is, or I should say, this one, um, my slide is a little bit messed up, so I'm gonna have to fix that. But under variable costing, um, this very top slide is showing us um, what we have traditionally seen with absorption costing. And now we're gonna be introducing a, a whole entire new, um, we have traditionally seen under absorption costing. We have sales, less your cost of goods sold equals gross profit, less your selling and administration expenses equals your income from operation. Now under variable costing, this is a new format that we will have to get used to. And remember under variable costing, this is only for your internal decision makers. We're only interested in how our cost or what our income looks like or what, how to report our income um, from the perspective of the variable items, the variable costs or the, var yeah, the variable cost, okay? So this is our new format, some things that we are gonna have to get used to. So now we have the variable cost of goods sold um, and that consists of direct materials, direct labor, and only the variable factory overhead. Um, and that equals the difference of that from sales less your variable cost of goods sold equals your manufacturing margin. And then after that, you have your variable selling and administra <laughs> the administration expenses equals contribution margin. And then you have all of your fixed costs from your fixed manufacturing costs and your fixed selling and administration costs, and then you get your income from operation. All right, so what we're gonna do now is take a second and go through this example. So you guys um, pause your video if you can, and go through and see if you can come up with the answers. And I'll be back in the next video to um, talk about this example and also go into the next section.